Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at a comparison between the Ryzen 9 6900HS and the Ryzen 5 5500U, both running Forza Horizon 5. Now the game is currently running the built-in benchmark right now at 1080p with the very, very low preset. And in terms of these settings, we're actually getting some decent performance out of the 5500U. We're at least above 30 FPS, 1% lows are at 30 FPS, and really overall you're going to be able to have a, an enjoyable experience with both games, though the 680M is really knocking it out of the park where we are getting an above 61% lows with averages that are in the hundreds of fps so we are actually getting really really good performance here where if we had a high refresh rate screen paired with this we could actually do some high refresh rate gaming without any issues this is really fantastic levels of performance and it really shows the benefit of rdna 2. you know it's really disappointing to see that rdna 2 is just essentially being locked behind very very expensive cpus and on the lower end of the market we are pretty much just going to be getting a rehash of vega yet again because we are not getting any RDNA 2 based replacements on the lower end of the market it's all still going to be Vega based at least at the very low settings it is at least able to keep up and we can at least have an enjoyable experience if we were just stuck with the 5500U it's really when you start to turn things up that things kind of start to fall apart as you can see here at the low settings the performance on the 5500U starts to drop off pretty significantly now we're looking at an average of 30 fps for the most part and 1% lows that are very thoroughly below that 30 FPS mark that we're trying to hit here to at least keep somewhat of a playable experience here. Now, it isn't completely off-putting, you know, but lower 20s or 1% lows, especially with a lot of fluctuation going on there, lets you know that we're really at the edge of performance here. So 1080p is reaching its limit here for the 5500U. Even the low preset is just too much. Meanwhile, the RDNA 2 based 680M is doing fantastic here where the one percent lows are starting to dip under 60 but not by a significant enough margin that i feel like it's going to ruin the overall gaming experience but it's definitely a noticeable drop compared to where we were at with the absolute lowest reset so even the rdna, RDNA 2 based gpu here is starting to struggle and really it's getting into the medium presets here that we start to actually see the 5500u fall apart to the point where this is just not going to be an enjoyable experience for almost anybody look at those frame times they are fluctuating all over the place it's just waves 1% lows are barely holding on to 20 and our averages are in the 25 region. That is not going to be a great experience. Now, the RDNA 2 based 680M is, of course, doing a good enough job to keep up here. We're getting averages that are pretty much at the 60 FPS range and 1% lows that are in the 40s. Now, it's not amazing. I think you're really starting to push it here in terms of what this chip can actually handle. But overall, it's still a playable experience and it is at least solid compared to what we're getting out of the 5500U here, where it's just really falling apart. This is just demanding way too much out of the system there, and it's really struggling to deliver any level of playable performance here. Now, switching things up to the high preset, now this is where both chips start to struggle here. The 5500U is just completely falling apart. It's not going to give you any semblance of a reasonable experience here. It's struggling just to be able to produce anything here while the 680m is actually providing us an average of 50 which is not bad and one percent lows of 38 so really not that different from where we were at at the medium preset the problem is that you are sacrificing a lot of performance here for what i don't really consider to be that much of a visual upgrade i really would rather just play this at medium than play it at high and get one percent lows that are just hitting that level of low and just introducing the occasional stutter here in the frame times as you can see the frame times just in general look much better than they do in the 5500u but you will see the occasional spike here and there and it's really just starting to get into territory where you're asking a little too much out of the chip that being said though this is 1080p high settings on a brand new title that is running on an apu this is really really impressive levels of performance so it just demonstrates that rdna 2 is very very much a welcome addition to the igpu market again we just end up in the same 
situation where where is this on the lower end where is this at least in the mid range because it really is starting to seem like there might be a huge difference in terms of performance here and to really demonstrate this here is the game running at the ultra preset the 5500u is at this point just the greatest powerpoint you've ever seen it's a slideshow it's not going to be great if anything the most impressive thing is look at those frame times absolute flat line of disappointment meanwhile you look at the 680m and we are at least getting a 30 fps average experience kind of you know we are going a little bit below that 30 fps and those one percent lows are starting to look pretty rough and you would have to be the most dedicated person to really want to play the game like this but again we end up in that situation where this is an igpu running a brand new title at 1080p with ultra settings and it's not an absolute dumpster fire you know like, like you look at the 5500 you running this game and you think well yeah that's how a game will run at ultra settings on an apu you look at what's going on with the 680m and that's kind of just really mind-blowing to think that there is that level of performance on the table here for igpu levels of performance so again it just ends up in a weird situation where the best igpu ever is locked behind expensive system really i'm very curious to see what the performance is going to be like on the next generation of ryzen 5 cpus because we are already only looking at half the amount of gpu cores here so if the gpu cores actually matter a lot this time we could be looking at very very reduced levels of performance as things go on but anyways i will see you guys in the next one